What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Moment episode. It's freezing here in Texas. It's 42 degrees, and it just rained. And one of our really good family friends has a huge beaver problem. We've got a pond right here off the road, a dam right here that leads to a creek, and they've killed so many beavers out of this place, and they still keep coming back and building the dam up. So it just rained today, so I'm thinking that they're going to be building the dam up again tonight. So uh, Judd's got his thermal, and then I got a big light. And I got the Air Force 45, so we're gonna see if we can get one down and then cook it and eat it. But uh, it's freezing and windy, so uh, probably not gonna be filming a whole lot until we find one. But uh, we're gonna get out right now and see if we can find one. I brought the waders just in case I have to get in the water. Hopefully, I don't. But got him. Heck yeah, baby. All right, I'm about to put my waders on. There was two of them. Current's bringing them over to me. He's right here. down baby oh it's definitely a headshot um uh, we got dinner though that's all we came here for Whew. i know a lot of you guys that watch my channel are from up north i feel so bad for you like 40 degrees here in texas actually i think it dropped down to like 38 and i'm absolutely freezing so got the beaver in the shop. I know the footage was, probably wasn't amazing. Judd was trying to film and hold the light and it all happened so quick. So I'm sorry if you couldn't see it. Not a huge beaver. That's my foot. Um, probably, I don't know, 15, 20 pounds. Good eating beaver. So uh, I'm gonna set y'all up on a tripod and clean him as fast as I can because I'm freezing. It's freezing here in my shop. And then uh, go put the meat in the fridge and we will cook it tomorrow. We'll do something tomorrow with the meat. I don't know what yet, but Stay tuned. I'm going to get this beaver clean and get inside and get next to the fire. Alright guys, so bear with me. I've only cleaned a handful of beavers, um, so I'm not the best at it. I dried them off a little bit and uh, they're so soft. I'm definitely keeping this pelt. But I took this little curry comb brush type deal and uh, brushed them out. Made sure there's no burrs or anything, so when I go to fleshing them, um, he'll be good to go. So. First thing you want to do on a beaver is go ahead and cut the old feet off on both ends. Okay, so we got the feet off on both ends. Um, make sure that belly side doesn't have any burrs or anything in them. So basically what you want to do, get those, um, all the feet cut off, you know, come down to the base of the tail. Cut in at the base of the tail, come straight up to the vent. Go around one side and come straight up, um, straight up the length of the beaver, right down the middle, all the way up to his chin. Just like that. And then uh, ring your tail. Stay close to the, uh, stay, stay as close to the tail as possible so you don't lose any of that skin. You can cut the tail off as well. Um, or you can just ring it around just like this. Not hard at all. And then what you wanna do um, just like any other animal is just start skinning them out and uh, I'll show you what we do whenever we get to the feet.
So I got that front foot out, and I did took my lathe, one of my lathe tools, and uh, you can take anything, a screwdriver, or uh, really whatever you have that you can get wedged under the, um, in between the meat and the skin of the, of the beaver. Like that right there. And then uh, kind of separate that, that skin underneath there. You can kind of pull up and uh, pop his pop his leg out just like that. You got your two little holes and uh, do the same for the back. All right, so there's your skinned out beaver pelt. Pretty awesome. Um, I'll put that in the freezer and uh, flush it out another day whenever I get to it. So now what I'm gonna do is just quarter it up, uh, take the back straps out and the hind legs and the front legs. So YouTube's been pretty uh, pretty strict lately and they're cracking down on these hunting channels and it's really messing with us. So I'm not gonna show the part where I disassemble it. I went to Wesley's the other day and we painted my Texan SS. So I'm gonna show y'all how y'all can do the same thing at home, it's super easy and it looks super good. So here's some footage of that, and then uh, when we get done with that, I'll see you guys in the kitchen. Go with a mil spec tan KG gun coat. So I just used it for a little while ago, so we're good to go. So one thing different, so we use in KG, so a lot of people know about Cerakote, so. PG is similar to Cerakote in that it's a gun protective finish, it's a paint on, but there's no catalyst required for high temp. And it's half the thickness of Cerakote, so it's going to be really great for this process. And once you're done, you just pour the leftover right back in the bottle, so no waste. some Eat Good and Mullet Man stickers. All right, it's very technical. Yeah, don't mess it up. I hope that's straight. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. Oh, it's on backwards. Nah, I'm just messing. All right, so now we're gonna do a little of our organic camo. Can be top secret, so don't tell anyone. Just YouTube. Yeah, just YouTube. All right, so here is a neat way to do camo with KG gun coat. You can't do this without a Cerakote. So, this is just an organic camo. Do a bunch of different colors and they'll blend together. All right, so that's the first one. We'll mix up another color and we're going to add some more color. All right, so now we have Magpul OD Green. We're just going to just start stacking colors up. And the last color, this we're going to do black. So a different stencil. But like I said, you could use a bunch of different technique stencils. Now remember, black's going to be a lot heavier of a color, so you don't have to apply it too thick. There you go. Just gives you another depth. So now we'll just remove the stencils and we'll have perfect eat good. We can blow some distress in if you want. You can do whatever you want from there. And like I said, this is a basic pattern. You can do as tough a pattern or as easy, but this will be a cool pattern for you guys at home. So we'll cool this down, we'll pull off the stencils, we'll show you what it looks like. So there you go guys. 
cool, easy. We got a little bit of residual there from the stickers. Nothing but care. And then eat good. So we could do a lot tougher camel patterns, but this is a neat one that we want to show you guys that you could do at home. You could do multiple different uh, stencil backgrounds to give you whatever effect you want. You can use mesh. Uh, so they could do this with spray paint at home? Yep, you can do it with spray paint at home. You can do it with the organic stencils. You can do it with uh, mesh patterns. I'll show you another <laughs> cool thing to use. So these little fish nets right here. So same concept of what we're doing. Uh, and you just, you know, drop it over and you do your spray and then you'll have this pattern and you can buy a bunch of different styles like this and it'll have you a good break up and then you can set up your gun and easy way to do it at home. So there you have it. Wesley showed us how you can do this same thing at home with a simple can of spray paint, a few little pieces of mesh. I think it turned out amazing. Um, he does a lot more intricate stuff as you can see. I mean, that stuff right there is crazy. That, that takes a lot more uh, skill. That's pretty awesome right there. Hit him up if y'all want a gun like this. I'm getting one. They're awesome. And uh, he can do all kinds of stuff. Stars. Whatever you want, he can do it. But something that you can do at home, if you have an Air Force air gun or um, any cheap gun that you want to paint, you can do the same exact thing. Get some stencils. You can probably go to Hobby Lobby, get some letters, and if you want to put your name on your gun or whatever, and just paint over it, peel the stickers off, and... Uh, It'll turn out like that. So, that looks awesome. All right guys, it's the next afternoon. Um, I went ahead and put all the quarters in the crock pot. As you can see, there's two left in there and I've already shredded up um, one back quarter and one front quarter. So, what I'm doing, it's kind of hard. I'm filming this by myself. So, I'm shredding this meat. I'm gonna do like a shepherd's pie type deal. So, I uh, boiled two potatoes. I already kind of crushed those up. Got our cast iron skillet, got a uh, cream cheese, regular Velveeta shredded cheese, and then I got some um, like mixed veggies in the freezer. So I'm gonna finish taking the meat off of these bones, and then uh, once I get it all shredded up, I will show y'all how to kind of layer it in the cast iron, and then we'll pop it in the oven 20, 30 minutes, and uh, she'll be ready to go. So we're gonna preheat the oven at 350. We got all the meat um, shredded up. Looks amazing. So what we're gonna do now is uh, take some Cosmo Q's barbecue sauce and uh, put a little bit in there, basically like a uh, chopped beef sandwich. Make that barbecue sauce all around. Make sure there's a good coating of it on all your meat. We'll add some potatoes. And all I did was boil, I boiled two potatoes and then cut them up and mashed them a little bit, but not to where they're like complete mashed potatoes. You still want chunks of, um, chunks of potato in there. So try to mix this up without spilling it everywhere before we get too far. We'll take our uh, mixed veggies. It's corn, green beans, carrots, and peas. And we'll put However much you think it takes, just enough to get it a good mixture in there. Let's move this over to a bigger bowl. Just like that. And I'll add a little bit more barbecue sauce since we're adding more ingredients to the mixture. Not like that. And now we'll just mix it all up. Mix it together. Do take some cream cheese and uh, just put little chunks here and there throughout the mix and uh, mix that in, and that will just melt in whenever it starts to cook. Spray your cast iron skillet so it doesn't stick, and then you want to just dump everything into your cast iron and uh, kind of pat it down to where it's all pretty even in there. All right, so now that that's all layered up, we'll take some uh, 
Velveeta cheese, you can use whatever cheese you want, I guess. I've never done this before, so I'm kind of winging it. But I'm gonna put a big, thick layer of cheese over the top. Oven is ready, 350. All right, we got our cheese layered on top. Now we will uh, throw it in the oven and give it about, so everything's already cooked besides the frozen veggies, but those won't take long to cook. So I'm gonna put it in there for, I don't know, 20 minutes and then we'll check on it and then we'll broil it, kind of char that cheese on top. So here she goes. All right guys, moment of truth. We're gonna take it out. Um, I just checked it and I didn't have to broil it. I left it in there. A little longer than I was expecting, so. Oh yeah, that looks delicious. Let that cool down a little bit and then uh, cut us a slice and see what she tastes like. Dive in and uh, get us a piece of this. Here. Cut it. Oh yeah. Let's give her the old taste test. All right. First bite. That is so good. I've had the, I've had beaver before, and uh, I fried it, and it was super good. So I knew it was gonna be good. That's why I took all the quarters, took all the meat off it, off of it that I could. Mm. If y'all are into trapping, or if you ever come across one, try this recipe, because I'm telling you right now, this is amazing. So that's gonna wrap this up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure, we got two weeks left in the giveaway. Be sure you get over to maltman.net. Every $20 counts as an entry. You and a friend are gonna come on a free hunt with me um, as well as nine other winners. Uh, you can go back and look at the video. I'll link it in the top of the description. I appreciate everybody that's already done it. It helps the channel out a lot. So make sure y'all stay tuned. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and remember, eat good.